Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the presentation on breast anatomy and physiology. This is based on slides provided by Professor Charles Adisa from Adia State University. The objective we hope the objectives we hope to cover at the end of this presentation or at the end of this topic is that we want to ensure that you understand how the breast develops and also at the end of this uh, topic you will understand the structure and function of the breast you get to appreciate the breath the blood supply and lymph lymphatics of the breast as well as understanding the basics of breast pathology so essentially you want to make sure that you understand how does breast tissue comes about and some abnormalities that can that, that, that surround the breast tissue then you understand why the lymphatics are important like in metastasis of breast cancer okay so the purpose of this introduction of this summary slide is to kind of highlight key things in the full um, handout so this is not the entire content of the handout that we are recording so as part of the introduction the breast is also called mammary gland so it's it's like a big gland in the body and the size this the size and shape of the breast depends on the person's age the race or genetic makeup some families might be more prone to having larger breasts than others it also depends on whether the breast is whether the person is pregnant or uh, breastfeeding the size of the breast might be might vary if there is disease in it and that disease might just be in one breast which is unilateral or it can be in both breasts which we call bilateral now breast tissues like the two breasts that a woman has are often not equal and this cross asymmetry is often due to overdevelopment of one breast or growth arrest of the other but typically both breasts are hardly equal now the breast development you see there are a few slides in the in the handouts that talk about breast development at birth at puberty and all that so to highlight to summarize what those slides say the breast the development starts as a breast body neonates and this breast board sometimes is due to the uh, maternal estrogens crossing the placenta now babies male and female babies are affected by this and sometimes you can have babies producing milk at birth and this is called witches milk it doesn't mean the babies are witches it just that's just what the, that, that milk is called now the normal female breast development starts just before menarche so it's important that we as clinicians understand how breast develops so we can allay some anxiety from patients or young adults who are developing their breasts the breast anatomy is at the core of breast cancer and understanding breast pathology so in this slide on the slides that follow uh, in handouts you'll find that the breast tissue starts from just around the clavicle and then it goes inferior so, so so the superior border is around the clavicle and then it also the medial border is here and the sternal area and you see the inferior border just around the sixth rib and then the the lateral border is in the posterior axillary line which is just here you know so the line like you draw a straight line from under the armpits going backward now not all of the breast tissue will be visible in all of these regions but it's good that you pay attention to these areas as you be as you begin to examine the breast now um, inside the breast so we're looking at the, the gross anatomy of the breast where or the surface anatomy not sorry gross anatomy where you would have uh, the looking at its um, 
directly you would find the areola and the nipple and then the breast the breast tissue but if you do a cross section of that you see the breast is comprised of fat tissue that's actually the most of the breast and then you would have the alveoli okay sorry after the fat tissue you would find the lobules so these are lobules and these lobules are where milk is made and inside the lobules you find alveoli now different lobe lobules are connected the lobules kind of give rise to the lactiferous ducts here and the lactiferous ducts come together to form sinuses where we which now end up in the nipple and milk comes out from that now the reason i had to go through this is because when you hear the names of breast cancer you might have lobular breast cancer or ductal breast cancer this is where it arises is it in the lobules or is it in the ducts that's kind of what you need to know regarding breast cancer so it's important that when you go through the slides you go you pay attention to this as well now the clinical implication is something i need you to understand that each of the structures in the breast has a role to play in how breast cancer manifests. Now, in the previous slide, there was something we looked at there, it's called the suspensory ligament that kind of holds the lobules and the uh, duct together. Now, the suspensory ligament also attaches the breast tissue firmly to the dermis. So, if there is any so if breast cancer starts this might shorten the suspensory ligaments and the ligaments when they are shortened they give rise to what is called what is called dimpling see here there's kind of a dimple now if you go back to the slides or, or, or yeah, when you're when you're doing your slides you'll find that there are several uh, pictures showing the clinical implication of of the or kind of correlating the clinical picture of breast cancer with the anatomy of the breast something like um uh pudor ranch and parkering and so just go, when you go through the slide the slides you kind of pay attention to this area as well then the other thing we need to know is around the surface anatomy of the breast basically how do we divide the breast so breast tissue is divided into quadrants, like you know, divided into four here, like having two lines across each other. And what, the, way we, what, the reason why we divide it into quadrants is to help us report where any abnormality is found. So in this picture, you find the uh, so this, this is the right breast. So you find the upper outer quadrant, upper inner quadrant lower inner quadrant and lower outer quadrant and then this is the areola complex and the numbers you find here represent how much breast cancer develops or how, how much breast cancer develops from each of these quadrants so you can see that the upper outer quadrant is known to have the most breast cancer almost half of all breast cancers arise in the upper outer quadrant it's very important that you understand this as you're working to become a good clinician for breast cancer the other thing in the slides are lymph nodes. You can't talk about breast cancer without talking about lymph nodes. And so there are several slides that talk about the lymph the lymph node drain the lymph drainage for breast tissue. And you'll find that some of the some of the lymph nodes drain into the apical group or the central group, and then you have the axillary vein. So these are the areas that we try to palpate when we are examining for breast cancer. So it's also important that you pay attention to this as you go through the slides. And so finally, it's just this is just to reiterate what we've said that understanding breast anatomy is essential for you to know the disease. It also guides our examination. And please take your time to review the slides and uh, ask questions if you have any. And remember to do a post-text survey. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you.